He's waiting for people to repent. And we also need to patiently wait. So we are waiting for God's promises, and then we also need to wait while we endure suffering. 1 Peter 2.20 says, For what credit is it if when you are beaten for your faults, you take it patiently? But when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. And 2 Timothy 2.3 says, You, therefore, must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. We're not very good at enduring suffering, I don't think. Sometimes we, we think that going, you know, being in a warm building is suffering, or being on a hard pew is suffering. Um, there, there are Christians in other parts of the world who are truly suffering. They are being punished for their faith. People are having their limbs lopped off. Some have had their heads lopped off. Uh, they've been burned. They've been thrown in jail. They've been starved. The church in China has had to go completely underground so that uh, they, well, that maybe that's not entirely true. There is, a, there is a state church out there that you could be a part of, but it's not really a church. You can't share your faith if you're a part of that church. If you really want to grow in Christ and live out the Christian life, you need to go to the underground church. And that underground church is persecuted. And they've been praying for us. Did you know that? They've been praying for the church in the United States. What do you suppose they're praying for? They're praying that we would receive persecution because they believe that we have fallen asleep in our faith that we are no longer alive in Christ, and that a little bit of persecution might do us some good to wake us up and realize just how serious this whole walk with God really is. So it may happen. I believe God honors the prayers of his people, especially the persecuted people. And then finally, we're supposed to endure each other Ephesians 4, 1 through 3 says, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, and enduring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. So this is something the apostles praying for us for, for us. And I, I understand, again, in this world, in this generation in which we live, Relationships are cheap. If people are not getting along, they just divorce. Or they go to a different church or whatever. And, and that's really not the way it's supposed to be. We're supposed to be able to confront one another in love and forgive one another and be patient with one another. And I believe it grieves the Holy Spirit when people just walk away. I know it grieves me. We're supposed to endure each other. Iron sharpens iron. And we need each other. We need each other so that we can challenge one another in our faith. So how do we grow in endurance? Well, I, I've got only three things that I would say to you to help you and to help me to grow in endurance. First of all, I would say follow Christ. If you are following Christ, he will give you the endurance that you need. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says, Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. See, Jesus is the pace setter on this race called life. And if we are following after him, and understanding that he endured the cross for our sakes, well, we also should be able to endure whatever hardship has been placed before us. Second, I would say, find purpose. 2 Timothy 2.10 says, Therefore, I endure all things for the sake of the elect, that they also may obtain the salvation which is in Christ Jesus with eternal glory. So I think about all those things that Paul, the apostle who wrote this, endured. And we went through the book of Acts together. And in that book, we learned that he had been uh, 
stoned. He'd been thrown out of synagogues. He had been mocked. He'd been whipped. He'd been thrown in jail. He was shipwrecked. All kinds of things happened to him. And he endured these things for you and for me. He says that he did it for the elect. The elect are those people that are going to come to believe in Jesus in all times. And since Paul was at the very beginning of the Church of Christ, he had that message that was going out. He endured for our sakes. He had that purpose. We also can identify a purpose for us, whatever that may be for you. Is it because you want to give glory to God? Is it because you might have a loved one who is looking at you and you want to give a good example to that loved one so that they also may come to believe in Jesus? If you can think about a purpose for the suffering that you are either enduring right now or about to endure, I believe that can help you to keep plodding step by step. And then finally, I would say foster fellowship. In Colossians 3, verses 12 and 13, we are told, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies, kindness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another, and forgiving one another. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also must do. The fellowship that we have with one another can help us to endure suffering. As people are able to tell their stories and encourage us and pray for us, and sometimes they need to kick us in the tail, don't they? But these things will help keep us going so that we can endure and be patient and long-suffering. Let's pray. Lord, this is, this is a little bit foreign to us. And I, I pray that you would help us to grow in patience toward one another as well as toward the, you know, the uh, trials that we might be experiencing right now. Lord, help us to be good soldiers of Jesus Christ and that we would re just uh, follow after his example. Lord, mostly I pray for unity between us, that we would really love one another and show kindness to one another and bear with one another that we would remember, since we have been forgiven, we also must forgive. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen.